bright and early this beautiful Tuesday morning. This is Lagos, Nigeria's commercial capital, and you're welcome to the morning brief. We're just past uh, the first half of April. We're now in the second half of the month of April. How fly times? How time flies, they say. <laughs> I'm Kaya Okikili. Welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah, that's deliberate, Kadi. Of course, we're not just bright, but we're upbeat and sprightly. Good morning and welcome to the morning brief. I am Bukola Koka. I'm Jeff Ruzong. Of course, it reminds me when Kyle said, this is Lagos. That's actually how we welcome la people oh, yeah. to Lagos. We don't say welcome to Lagos. We just speak that reality to you so that whatever it is you're thinking, uh, wherever you're coming from, remember that this is Lagos. Yes, what does yes. that mean? I really don't know. But just know this is Lagos. So <laughs> be ready for anything, any action. And uh, of course, we're going to have a great show. Welcome to the program. All of that just to say welcome. Yeah. This oh, is Lagos. I, I see what this is now. Uh, so this what is... we'll do when we start the show, we'll give you guys two minutes yeah. just to do your banter, then we'll come to what we have on the show. But you know that this is Lagos somewhere around. Oh, yes. Kedala. Yeah, yeah, actually. It's, it's been a, a, you know that place, a, a right? joke, uh, uh, well, uh, an element of jokes. They tell you, in other parts of the country, they tell you, welcome to your state. Welcome to Ogun. But in Lagos, they don't say welcome. just say, this is Lagos, and that's understandable. And the point of all of this is to essentially uh, help states understand that they have their comparative advantages. You cannot take that away. Lagos is will never be like Ogu State, will never be like Nasara or Niger. Doesn't mean one is better, it just means everyone should look inwards and just bring out all of the great things about your state. It could be agriculture, which some states do not have in abundance. It could be mineral resources and the rest. So look at your state and say, well, what is special about my state? And let us hear about it this morning on the show. Yes, uh, indeed, Kadi. Lagos, the city of dreams, yeah. you know, that invites everyone from all parts of the country. It is that city where they say that you can pursue your dreams. And as a matter of fact, maybe not even dreams, you know, uh, that famous um, idea or perception about Lagos that when you come to Lagos, at least you can make money for the day's meal but you know some time ago uh, the statistics that we got from the mbs is uh, a breakfast now costs between the average of 900 naira to 1200 naira right Cardi? so i asked a couple of my colleagues this morning do you have five naira do you have 10 naira do you have 20 naira and the question i got was what am i doing with those you know currencies so <laughs> this is what i could get Jeffrey, I'm asking again, do you have five naira? I can't remember the last Ten one. naira <laughs> or twenty naira? It's a cashless economy. It's a cashless no, no, economy. No, no. Like, Forget about it. I can do bank <laughs> transfer for being cashless. You. We can transfer it to I you. I can do right bank now. transfer. No, no, no. Hmm? Do you have five naira? I don't. Do you have ten naira? I, 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 I do, actually. Where is it? It's in my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Got you there. <laughs> but well, guess what? I have 500 naira. Oh. That, that's a pretty huge currency in the light of the circumstances. You know, but the okay. whole idea of this is, you know, uh, just to support some of the, one of the themes of the program this morning, which would be the rising cost of commodities uh, as against uh, the um, so gaining in strength of the Naira, you know, uh, for lack of words, for better description, as against the dollar. So what can you buy with that category of currency? very little or practically nothing. And it seems as if they're now becoming relics that will be hung in our museums as, you know, a memory of Nigeria's past. Mm. But that is rather sad. You know, somebody described Nigeria's economy as a sachet economy because we are not a wealthy nation. If you want to buy milk, you want to buy um, beverage, all categories of, even water, you buy them in sachets. You, you cannot buy in bulk. You know, so. Uh, something to reflect on this morning, guys. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot that is going around when it comes to the economy. Uh, there are so many moving parts that uh, we see that the experts are trying to pull together. But the people are asking straight questions, and the straight questions are if the Naira is rebounding, gaining strength against the dollar, why uh, cost of commodities and services not, you know, uh, reflecting that as well. Some people are saying inventory, some people are saying customs duty, some people have said the energy cost, transportation cost, it's a popular of issues. Uh, the food inflation is now 40% uh, between when Ashwaji Bala Tinubu took over and now it's about 15% increase in food inflation from 24 down to 40. And then the headline inflation moving from about 22 to now 33 point uh, uh, or so. So about 10% increase. So all of this 
some the economists are saying be patient it takes a bit of time for all of this to come together mm. uh for us to begin to see a proper reflection in the economy but it's going to be a bit sticky if you understand how these things work right when it comes to the inflation number it's going to be a bit sticky uh because we're still expecting tariff from electricity whether you like it or not it may eventually come through at the end of the day <sighs> so there are so many moving oh, parts yes. to this indeed uh well that's the much I can explain. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot. So I would ask you guys to keep your gunpowders dry. <laughs> it's a bumper package today. <laughs> They'll cut the bumper bug. Right. So, uh, <laughs> 9.30 for a balanced diet daily. In fact, you have to divide it by three because mm. you're expected to have three meals daily. So that's just about 300 naira. But let's get into what we have for you on the show. Of course, you have an insight as to one of the major topics. New inflation figures show that prices continue to soar. That's in spite of the gains made by the Naira against the dollar. And that begs the question, whatever happened to the saying, what goes up must come down. Perhaps Nigeria was not factored into that. So <laughs> this morning, we hear from business people exactly what's driving up their prices and hopefully see if economics has an explanation for that. And from economy to politics, barely a year after leaving office as governor, APC National Chairman Abdullahi Ganduji reported to have been suspended from the party by some ward executives. But curiously, another set of executives denounced the suspension. We dig deeper to see whose claim is legitimate. Politics, they say that's how it plays out. Let's see how that plays out. But that's not all we have for you. Let's talk to you about some exciting things that Nigerians are about to do or already doing. Nigerians are new to breaking record, but this young man plans to do it the hard way as he sets out today to become, listen to this, the fastest to visit all 54 African countries without using a plane. Yes, you heard that right. The goal is to showcase the rich culture, raise awareness about barriers and travel within the continent, and promote that borderless Africa. So you see him drive there. It's going to be, you know, is he hoisting now Nigerian flag? Oh, yeah. Just going around Just, with the flag. Let's not use the word hoist. Maybe yeah. pin Nigerian Just flag. Just going around with the flag and showing that, oh, <laughs> I When you pin, you remove and move. Oh. In every so, yeah. city you know, <laughs> of every 54. country that he visits. So I'm curious how he's going to do places like those uh, island nations like Capo Verde, as they call it, or Cape Verde, or Madagascar, Antananarivo. I'm just curious. We're going to find out all of that from Absolutely. him. Because if you know the way the map works, it's just those places are like Far outskirts away. Yeah. away from the core Africa. And then he runs through the northern part. I don't know how you're going to avoid the conflict areas within the areas of Somalia and the Hutu Jeffrey, River. You're already getting into this conversation. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> keep your gunpowder dry, know. Jeffrey. Let's <laughs> keep this dry. All but right. obviously, as you can see, it's going to be a very interesting yeah. one, guys. So, Cardi, yeah. can, I, can I take this? I, well, I didn't give you that, so you can. I know you are trying to raise funds, Bukola, so you know what? <laughs> you know what I'm asking? It's okay. The last time we did an illustration, yeah, I wanted to take it. the 1,000 naira, and you said no. Thanks. She wants to raise funds for... No, no, no. Uh, you can keep that. Oh, thank <laughs> you she do go fund me. What are you go fund <laughs> This is come fund me right here. But <laughs> <laughs> sure. well, let us know what is interesting about your state, and don't forget, you can be a part of this conversation around the economy. Your price watch. Have the prices changed ever since the naira gained? Send all of your messages to us on WhatsApp. We're big on WhatsApp just for you this morning. As I always say, Bukola is just a WhatsApp message away from you. So that's the number right there on your screen. And you can also do this on social media. Hashtag CTV Morning Brief or just at CTV Morning Brief across board. You know what? We're all a WhatsApp message away from you. So that is an insight into what we have for you this Tuesday morning, April the 16th. But we're starting off with our top stories in a few seconds. So stay with us. It's a morning brief, guys. Let's now bring you our top stories on the brief this morning. We begin with the number one citizen, that's President Bola Tidubu, who has now returned to the nation's capital, Abuja, from Lagos here, where he spent the Eid al Fidri, marking the end of Ramadan. The president who arrived at the Namdiaziko International Airport around 4 p.m. was received on arrival by the minister of the FCT, Mr. Yesom Wike, the chief of staff, Sir Femi Bajabiamila, APC National Chairman, Abdullah Ganduje, and other top government officials. The president had spent just about one week uh, in Lagos celebrating the Eid before returning back to work. Or well, we'll stay with 
uh, the president, of course, to see what comes out of his office today. But in another case here in Lagos, after over two years of a coroner's inquest into the cause of death of Sylvester Romani Jr., who was a student of Darwin College, Lagos, the coroner, Magistrate Mikhail Kaderi, inquiring, has returned a verdict that the boy died a natural death. In the presentation that lasted over six hours, the coroner also held that the death was avoidable as the negligence of the parents and the medical team contributed to it. Magistrate Kadri absolved some students of Doan College named in the incident as it concluded that they played no part in the death of Sylvester and should not have been involved in the matter. But father of a late student disagrees with the verdict which he says does not represent the true position of evidence taken. But I must tell you, as a father, the verdict does not represent the true proceeding of, of the court. I came to court every day. I don't miss any day. I might come late. But I have my younger ones and my lawyers here, including the family father. does not represent the true position of the, of the uh, uh, evidence taken. Over 900 pages of record of proceedings, and he has produced the truth in line with logic, in line with science. Um, it's unfortunate that innocent young boys almost had their lives irreversibly destroyed because of lies. Lies that have been shown for what they are today. Meanwhile, human rights lawyer Mr. Femi Falano has faulted the coroner's judgment on Sylvester Romani Jr., which exonerated Doan College and blamed his death on the negligence of the family doctor. In a statement, Mr. Falano notes that it is curious that the coroner ignored the evidence of a government pathologist that a black substance found in Sylvester's stomach was not subjected to toxicological examination. He claimed that the allegation was that the student was forced to drink a poisonous substance. And on to security now, the Oyo State Police Command has paraded 21 suspects in connection with the invasion of Oyo Government Secretariat on Saturday, April the 13th. The invaders who claimed to be members of the Yoruba Nation Agitation Group were paraded alongside seized exhibits like guns, ammunition, plaques with the Yoruba Nation insignia, cutlasses, walkie-talkies and other communication gadgets. The Oyo State Police Commissioner Adebola Hamza told journalists while addressing them that the suspects will be charged with treasonable felony and terrorism. Many of them ran into the bushes and we pursued them. And that's where we were able to arrest a few others from the seven we initially had. There was an injury to a government functionary that is a member of the Amatepun. He was shot and about nine pellets were removed from his leg. I know of that injury to us, but I also know of injury to them, few of them who resisted arrest and fired at our people. Whether anybody died apart from the one we arrested, I cannot see. But our combing of the bush, we did not see any cops that shows anything like that. Now, hundreds of traders are counting their losses in a fire outbreak that gutted the market in Yola Town. The fire, which was caused by the way, is yet to be ascertained, destroyed about 90% of the shops housing various commodities. Our people here have not, they did not, they did not have another strength to build another shop here. You can see after Salah, everybody have go to buy another goods to come and uh, sell for the, for the peoples. If you can see, everything have gone. Nobody can tell you that he removed any, a single piece of something that he removed. The deputy governor was at the scene of that fire to sympathize with victims and there was a promise that the state yeah. government will support them. I'll take a listen. Mm. Commiserate with our brothers and sisters who have been affected in this fire in Fanu. Our word as a government is that government will look into whatever has transpired. For now, we cannot tell how many shops have been affected. We cannot also tell the source of the fire. 
but government will ensure that that is discreetly looked into to find out what happened, why it happened, and how many people are affected, and government will see what it can do to bring succor to our people, because this government is a government that has a feeling of its people at heart, it's a government that believes in building its people, it's a government that believes in ensuring that the people are carried along. So this government will definitely do something about it. Well, let's move on now to politics. There's been a back and forth over a reported suspension of the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Mr. Abdullahi Gaddouche. Now, it began with a proclamation by said ward executive in Dawakin Tofa, led by Harun Banjo, that the former governor has to declare his name of corruption allegations. But in swift reaction, ward executive committee members and uh, Dawakin Tofa local government executive committee members have denounced the purported suspension. Now, in a media address, uh, the Ganduje ward chairman, Ahmed Koko, claimed that the other group was sponsored by the NNPP state government and from the record of the party of the ward, local government and state, they're not card-carrying members of the APC. He also denounced the committee's intent to pursue, uh, rather announce uh, their intent to pursue legal action against the individuals involved. Now, that's on the one hand in the APC. Let's head over to the opposition People's Democratic Party now. Ahead of a National Executive Council meeting of the PDP, some concerned stakeholders of the party from the North Central are appealing to the National Working Committee of the party to allow the national chairmanship position to remain in Bainu State, where the suspended national chairman of the party, Mr. Yocha Ayu, comes from. Addressing a news conference in Abuja, former federal lawmaker, Senator Okajev, explains that the constitution of the party allows that the chairman or any national officer who is suspended be replaced with another member from the same zone. It is on record and with authority that consultations are in top gear to find a replacement of Dr. Chair Yu from the North Central Zone. As concerned North Central PDP stakeholders, we have followed with diligence the various consultations with the founding fathers of the PDP and other key stakeholders of the party across the country. This group of North Central stakeholders has unanimously agreed to appeal to the, for the retention of the seat of the North Central chairman of a great party, the PDP, in the North Central zone. We therefore appeal to the leaders of our great party saddled with the responsibility of choosing a replacement for Senator Yoche Ayu to consider this appeal. In the spirit of fairness, justice, and equity, the North Central Zone shall be given the opportunity to complete our tenure as chairman of the party. The emergence of a North Central candidate will adequately mobilize the entire party to form a formidable opposition that will salvage this nation from the unbelievable hardship faced by the Nigerian by Nigerians and return our great party to its winning ways. Let's talk oil and gas now. The Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, the NPRC, says that the nation's oil and gas reserves as of January the 1st stood at 37.5 billion barrels. And that's from 37 uh, billion barrels recorded as of May 2022. During a press conference in the nation's capital, the chief executive of the commission, Engineer Binga Komalafi, announced the creation of strong policies aimed at improving and optimizing oil and gas operations in the country. Let me therefore reiterate that the Commission is committed to improving the country's oil and gas reserves as well as the successful completion of all strategic initiatives that would enhance the sector's productivity, including the Nigerian Gas Flare Commercialization Plan. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, an overview of the nation's oil condensate associated gas and non-associated gas reserves as of January first 2024 as follows first crude oil and condensate reserves stand at 31.56 billion barrels and 5.94 billion barrels respectively amounting to a total of 37.50 billion barrels as the total national uh, reserves of uh, crude and condensate. The associated gas and non-associated gas reserves stand at 102.59 TCF trillion cubic feet and 
106.67 TCF respectively, resulting in total gas reserves of 209.265 TCF. Well, more economy and more figures. Nigeria's headline inflation has maintained its upward trajectory, but this time soaring by 1.50% to 32.20%, and that's up from 31.7% recorded in February. The latest figure, which rose far above economists' forecast, is one of the highest in the country's history, as the nation continues to grapple with high cost of food, transportation, energy, and services. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, the food inflation, which is one of the major contributors to the headline figure, was higher at 40%. Core inflation climbed to 25% within the month in review. While at the same time, urban inflation increased to 35%, while rural inflation jumped 31.45% in March. And outside the country, and so it begins. Former United States President Donald Trump is facing his first criminal trial at a New York court over hush money allegedly played, paid to adult film actress Stormy Daniels in the lead up to his election win in 2016. On the first day, dozens of potential jurors were excused after saying they cannot be impartial and jury selection is expected to continue for at least the rest of the week. In March last year, prosecutors filed an indictment that made Trump the first former president of the U.S. to face a criminal trial. They allege that the payments falsely recorded as legal expenses were used to bury allegations that might have hurt him during the 2016 presidential campaign. Well, he faces 34 counts of fraud, but denies any legal wrongdoing. Now, the maximum penalty, if he's found guilty, is four years behind bars, but then experts say that a much less severe penalty will be more likely. And to sports, nearly a hundred days before the 2024 Paris Games open, the Olympic flame will be lit in ancient Olympia today. And that's for a torch relay stretching from the Acropolis to French Polynesia. Also for the first time since events for the 2020 Olympic uh, in Tokyo, and 2022 Beijing Winter Games had to be toned down due to the COVID-19 pandemic, spectators will be able to attend the torch relay event. Well, some 600 dignitaries are expected at the ceremony today, headed by Greek President Katerina Sakelaropoulou and International Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach. Always a sight to see, but those are the top stories at this hour. Definitely, they'll be shaping the conversation on the show and for the rest of the day. But Jeffrey joins me now to take a look at what you've been saying about those major stories. Jeffrey. Exactly. One of the things that caught my attention is that Olympic touch. It's yeah. all, when you watch how these things are done, it's almost spiritual. Absolutely. It tells you how rooted this is in culture. Mm. And it tells us as Africans, we shouldn't throw away our culture. Sometimes we just, because of modernization or civilization, we just throw away things. But these people have sustained this. So wherever the Olympic is taking place, so when you see it happening in Greece and listen of this uh, touch and all of that, wherever it is done, there's something almost spiritual about it, and it's beautiful to see. Absolutely. So uh, it's but like that's like exporting, <laughs> like exporting their own. Thing yes. For exactly. You know, centuries exporting exactly. around the world now. Everything but, about us cannot be bad. Come absolutely. on, guys. All right. So let's find out what you're saying. The first uh, first up here is uh, the inflation numbers. Oof. It's now up by 1.5 percent, 33.2 up from 31.7 uh, as at the months before, and. Um, Naira is rebounding, gaining strength. Literally, Naira is on steroid. But, you know, inflation is also on steroid. So both are going in parallel, in different directions. So Smart Dan says, for how long can it stay? Because high cost of living is still going up in the country. Dollar going down supposed, is supposed to make the cost of living uh, cheaper now, according to you. So that's the dilemma for a lot of people, really. Yeah. What's going on? Well, Kamal KT on X also says... And it's a breakdown from Kamal Katie. Take a look at it. It says, customs duty, high, high. Electricity tariff, high. Fuel prices, high. How won't inflation be high? And you're saying food prices should go down? <laughs> says, okay now. But essentially, that's a sentiment that is put across uh, by this user there. And, well, give some sort of... Uh, yeah, they're, they're, for it's this. very close to that explainer. Mm -hmm. Very close. Cost if it's because when you bring in your goods, the charging is high. 
tariff is high. These are all uh, they push the cost of uh, production mm. quite to the to to, to to you know higher points. However, he's also worried. Uh, some people are worried about the fact that, but if the exchange rate is you know is getting better for us, why won't it affect us? That's why we say it's going to be sticky for a while. But hey, the expert will explain all of that. Uh, where are we now? Why are you sure you okay? You read everything. Uh, this person, Chimeze, says, Chikeze, Chimeze Chikeze says, what CBN is doing with Naira gaining is good, but artificial. This is because Naira keeps gaining every day, yet full stuff and other commodities, which skyrocketed during the devaluation of the Naira, are still the same. They are not coming down. Inflation may continue upwards. <sighs> Colin Zobineze has a curious question, and this user is asking, could this be witchcraft economics and this is why this user says that says how can inflation rate rise when lending rate was increased that's the mpr right that's the um what's another term we can use for the mpr the interest rate. interest rate yeah. so you can understand what that is excess naira in circulation was mopped up by the cbn as a result dollars started dropping and that's why this user asked could this be witchcraft economics don't worry We'll try to answer those questions. Maybe I might not put it this way, but you get answers to those but, questions. But at, the, at the end of the day, just to tell you that there are so many moving parts that uh, even if I exchange rate, because stability is being looked at in the range of between seven to 900, mm. they say it's moderating from one nine to where we are right now. Yeah. So it just tells you that even if the exchange rate goes down, there are so many other fundamentals that have to be sorted because if the exchange rate is good for us, doesn't mean that it is a huru. That's what this is reflecting. It may take a bit of time for it to reflect on every other thing at the end of the day. But let's talk about this. <laughs> when I saw this, I said, oh, not again, Karede. I did say that this, this national grid lacks sugar. We need to pump in some energy. This is the third time in the year third that the grid is collapsing. I think the last was uh, not too long ago. Yeah, just two weeks ago. Two, uh, about three weeks ago or so. Two, two three weeks, weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks and now that national grid has collapsed. And when we're talking to the expert, they did say that it's going to continue to collapse because of certain things they explained. Uh, maybe the uh, Minister of Power will be able to explain all of that. Uh, what has not been done for it to stop collapsing. Anyway, uh, Judex Luxury Apartments said, now wow, looks like the 10th time already this year. Not that bad. Come on, they should find a way to fix this issue. Maybe once in a while, it's okay to happen, but not on a regular basis like this. The power minister should do better in tackling this persistent problem. Obajamu Jr. on X has this question, and I think that a lot of Nigerians will nod their heads to this question. Mm. And I have some sort of explainer. I spoke with a lawyer recently. Mm. And I says, if someone pays fully for bans, and they don't deliver what was paid for, that's the hours mm. that you're meant to get minimum. Do the citizens have the rights to sue the band suppliers, in this case, the distribution companies? If you increase fees and can't provide services, there should be consequences. So two things at play here. If it's the, uh, the grid now, that is not in the purview of the distribution companies. And this is not even me trying to give explanation for that. So, Maybe not sue the distribution companies this time around. Right? I need to go back to the transmission mm. end of things. But on the flip side, that hold, you have to supply that amount. Mm. I think the law also gives a room for, uh, it has to be over a period of time. So if you fail to do it over a period of time, then that's when it's justiciable, you can be sued. So it's important to look at those laws. Maybe one of these days will break it down for you, but just to give you an insight. The truth is that if you want to sue these people, they will be in court for years. Because and you have to come together. The power, the class the power sector, they've disappointed Nigerians. Nigerians are exhausted. But let's go to what's happening in Kanu politics. Yeah. Uh, that word executive suspend Abdullah Gunduje, the national chairman of the party. Olumide says, no permanent friend or enemy in politics. Imagine how he lost the grip of the, power, power, of the party state chapter so fast. He should go and face uh, charges levied leveled against him, I guess that's what you wanted to say. Well, Fishbone28 has this to say about uh, that situation. Not to forget that there are two sides to this. There's exactly. one side say we're suspending, another side says, well, you're not even members of the party in the first yes. place, so you are supported by the state government. That's what they allege. But this user says, uh, that's Fishbone28, saying that we should still appreciate the world for doing the right thing. What is right to you <laughs> may be wrong to another person. And then it says that... Um, 
though it took longer than expected. I imagine you're a member of the people that suspended, and that's how we have social media. So when I, different angles. Yeah, so when I spoke to the legal advisor of the state chapter of the APC, it's a, it's a bit of a confusing situation. So he said that the people who led that particular uh, uh, suspension are not members of the party, but there were like two people who were members of the party that were in that meeting. So the state chapter, the local government chapter has now suspended those members. So where did all of that emanate from? So politicians, you guys should just calm down. Let us be clear on what you're doing. Come on. We're you way know? past this. Or we should be way past this. I don't already. know. What else? Uh, maybe we can go on. Uh, yeah. Switch gears now. Let's switch gears now to that incident that happened at uh, Glory Doma Dynamics International Worship Center uh, with Pastor Paul in uh, a, cler a, clergy, uh, a cleric in um, the, the pastor of the church in, uh, in Abuja. Yeah. Uh, where the lady came to testify that she graduated in law and he asked her a few questions. She said BSc lawyer was uncomfortable with the fact that BSc is supposed to be LLB and all of that. And then so he said, lie, it's not true that she graduated. But let it her turns out, out that she actually graduated. She actually did graduate. She's not quite articulate and all of that. But, you know, he got a lot of flack for it. They've reconciled now. The lady, his wife, himself, uh, and the lady, we saw them in pictures. But this is what you were saying. In reaction to that, Edu, the pay Paul boss says, I think it's a step in the right direction. I also think he should do it on the All Town Sunday, God's grace. Uh, so keep oh, the see. energy you used to. I see what you're doing. Yeah. You know, in media, you have to give it the same prominence yes. on the same platform as. Yes, in that's what, what the happened. person is requesting. Okay, uh, this next user, Pablo Mirabayo, he says, and that's talking about the apology uh, that came out of, uh, you know, the, the ministry. He says that this validates the point that we're all still humans. And we are prone to making mistakes. We all mm. keep on learning and growing. So it's Papa. Now, Papa in this climate is another term people use for, you know, pastors, general overseers, and the rest. Says Papa will do the needful. I trust him 100%. So what is the needful in this case? You know? All right. I guess Omo Kogi, Omo Kogi uh, Yagba is, uh, may explain that needful. Say, Papa, so Paul and Enche, should bring out the lady during the church service and tender a public apology to her, acknowledging the impact of the stage fright on individual performance. It's crucial to recognize that not everyone is eloquent in front of a crowd and continually hammering on. Uh, I guess that's where you stop. I, I wanted to. There you go. Uh, Tobinski also shares the same sentiment. So perhaps you wait to see how that plays out. It's still how many days to Sunday now? Mm. Four days. Well, for four, four, five, four, five days, days mm. depending on how you look at it. So we'll wait to see if some of your, well, I say requests or suggestions uh, will come to fruition. But those are what the things you're saying. Don't forget you can be a part of the show. Yeah. Hashtag CTV Morning Brief or on WhatsApp. So what we'll do now is take a moment and get into that very thorny issue of the economy. But just before that, let's show you uh, that image which we reference uh, Pastor Paul and Enche and the lady uh, who gave that testimony. And of course, it's been a controversial issue, but he since apologized. So take a look at the, what do you call it, a reunion now? Oh, there you go, with, uh, with smiles on her face. And All the right. pastor right there. And, uh, and she, she did accept the apology. Yeah. She, she, she said, look, I'm going to be still a member of the church. <clears throat> He's still going to be my spiritual father, as they are referred to. Uh, because some people are saying that if they were the one, that's the end, the end coming. Somebody said, from the stage, out of the hall, never to come back again. Hey, but she demonstrated a good yeah. spirit, by the way. Yeah. Um, you know, and the pastor has also uh, done the needful by apologizing and getting right. to her to say, look, uh, this was not intended to be. Uh, lessons uh, learned, and that's what's important. I mean, mistakes can be made, but always make sure we learn from it. And that's for everybody, government, you know, leaders, and the people. So let's take a cue from this. As I said earlier on, we'll take a moment now, at least we're ending on a cherry note, it will seem, but come back to take a look at the thorny issues of the economy. One of the users asked, is this witchcraft economics? We'll try to answer that question as to why the Naira is gaining, but prices are also soaring doesn't quite make sense, but join us in a few seconds. It's the Morning Brief, guys. But uh, the bow, like a medium-sized bow that I, I used to buy, used to be like uh, uh, 2,000, 2,500, depending on the seed. But today now, you know, you know, it used to be like, uh, yes, 
2,000. But today now, I bought smaller one of it for 2,000. Instead of the size I normally buy, I bought smaller one of it, 2,000. Then pepper, pepper small boy is 4K today now. Instead of 2,000. Uh -huh. Granite oil, normally they sell one liter, uh, 75 C or granite oil for 1,000. Today now I bought it for 1,500. I was like asking the woman, ah, is it not supposed to come down? He said, no, that you have not come down. Even though that they did not add money, but it's still the same price. So basically, things have not come down. We have not seen the effects. So Metro now, it may be 40000 But road is very expensive. Need government to be the uh, dollar come down. But make them sell all the people sell. The people that are selling market, they don't want to make the, uh, the market come down. So, they the help us beg them. And part of FOI, they say FOI will come down. We never hear. FOI never come down. We need the, if FOI same come down, the market will still come down. Local rice, we have PD lady. We have PD lady. PD lady is 65.5. That's what we have in our store now. But we are out more. Ultimate is 67,000. Ultimate is 67,000. Beans. It's bag. It's 160,000. We have the one of 85,000. We have the one of 155,000. Yeah, and for that one, I will say 4,000, 4, 5, 5,000 a day. Big one, 6,000. Eh, hey, yeah, number one, but you know, beyond the number of 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 the You know, hearing and seeing the figures, that's never enough. You need to see the people behind those figures. And that's what we've shown you now. The people who sell those commodities in the market tell you the prices and why the costs are as much as that in spite of the Naira gaining against the dollar. But the question is, is that enough for you? Because a lot of them, when you go to the market, will say, ah, dollar don't rise. That's why this is rising well some will talk about you know transportation that's the fuel price and the rest but you know what let us take all of those questions and just dump it at the table of someone who knows about economics we're joined on the program from our Boja studio by mr ayo oyalowo is a development development economist uh, good morning mr oyalowo welcome to the morning brief good morning Kayode. Nice to have you. I mean, to be in your studio. Thank you very much for having me. It's good to have you, Mr. Oyalowo. But, you know, listening to those Nigerians talking about why the cost of commodities remain high in spite of the Naira gains, because a lot of people were talking about the Naira to the dollar, and, you know, there were a lot of flax uh, thrown the way of government. So government is finding ways to bring it down, but for the goods, what goes up is not coming down. One of our users asked, is this witchcraft economics so let me just put it straight to you mr yellow uh. is this witchcraft economics <laughs> no but we we need to understand that uh, there are two sides to this coin while the monetary policy side is uh, working perfectly now at least to a large extent the monetary policy is being handled by the cbn we we know what has happened in the last couple of months the MPR rate has gone up. <clears throat> they are mopping up uh, the excess liquidity in the system so as to uh, enable the Naira to strengthen us. So what should not happen is a marriage between the uh, monetary and the fiscal side. So the, while the monetary side, we are seeing the result in terms of the appreciation of the Naira, the fiscal side has not yet fully been... Uh, 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 as up as the monetary side. So we need uh, some form of a policy uh, structuring to get that right. However, a lot of things must also come into place. You see, uh, we have to look at it from several angles. Uh, our people too, we have our own way of uh, adding to the problem of ourselves. Because yes, I, I saw the 
images and I listened to the interviews and then I saw the oh, Naira dollar thing. I'm a Nigerian, I, I experienced it. I remember I had to be questioning the guys I went to buy water from some times back when the refill bottle water suddenly shot up to 1,300 from 900 and I asked, are you importing this water? Because clearly we also have some fundamentals that needs to be breached. And this is the area where the Minister for Trade and uh, Commerce needs to come in place. There must be some mechanism put in place to structure these price uh, issues because it is very obvious that price gouging is also a challenge that we are dealing with. Sometimes it's not just uh, demand and supply. Our people have the tendency to gouge prices. And price gouging is actually a, is a crime I remember the FCCPC went to some shops, even though many people didn't like it. And I don't think that place they went to was the right place. I was listening to some discussions recently where you go to a supermarket and you find out that what you are seeing on the shelf, where you get to the counter to pay, is not what they are charging you. So uh, I, I, th I think, while we think we are running a classical economy, there must be some form of uh, control mechanism to ensure that uh, traders are not cheating the people. What, what do I mean? Uh, some people claim, oh, the dollar went up, so our prices went up. So now the dollar has come down. If your price, if the price of your good is because of the dollar, then it should, ref it should be reflective in what you're selling. But you will now hear the second argument. Oh, we stocked up when the dollar went up. That is why we cannot sell at a lower price. I was speaking with uh, somebody who uh, deals in telephone recently. And the funny thing is, I asked the same person that when the dollar went up, you didn't wait for your new stock to come in before you raise the prices. So these are challenges. So we need to put those aside. I mean, put all those things side by side. And like I said, the Minister of Trade and Commerce, or that ministry as a whole, needs to be involved and the Ministry of Agriculture in terms of the food inflation. Because if you look at the current headline inflation, the highest uh, uh, inflation figure we have came from the food inflation side. So which means we might still have inflation figures going up month on month. However, it has slowed down. What do I mean? A month before, it rose by 1.8%. This current one is 1.5. So while it's rising, it is slowing down. And I think it will still rise for the next one or two months. Then it will thaw down. Then it will start coming down. How will this happen? Uh, that will be harvest in the next couple of months. So by the time we ha harvest comes in after the rains, clearly food inflation will start coming down. However, there are some other fundamentals that we also have to consider. The electricity... Uh, uh, figure that has gone up uh, pricing, I, I, I would have suggested if the Minister of Power and the NERC know what they are doing, what we are having should not be banned, trying to cheat some people and call it band A and some people band B, because right now nobody is getting the supply. What I expect, if you say, okay, you cannot provide electricity at the current price, should have been a marginal increase across board, not cheating Paul to pay Peter like they are doing. So a lot of fundamentals have to come in. Yes, also the price of uh, transportation, but if you also follow the trend, the, uh, the Dangote refinery have come in, 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 in have come on stream, and uh, they're already selling diesel. And that means the pressure on FX for importation of diesel, diesel must come down over the period, the next few months. And when that happens, you'll find that the uh, uh, price of uh, production will come down because diesel prices will drop. And um, also, there is another new policy that just came out. It says uh, all, uh, people, all companies that are into uh, diesel, I mean, the crude oil production must first and foremost supply Nigerian-based refineries 
before you can sell outside the shop. So when all this crystallizes, when they all come together, it will definitely have impact on our inflation figure. So I'm saying inflation is going to rise in the next one or two months again, then it will start to drop over the next three, four, five months. Yeah, Mr. Ayalo, it's a mixed bag, really. It uh, gives cause for hope and yet again uh, for worry if inflation would rise in the coming months, uh, however minimally. But it's important to also look at where we're coming from in order to progress to, you know, our ultimate destination. And this is uh, why I ask this. Uh, the Naira has gained against the dollar. Uh, we're coming from 1,800 Naira to the dollar just about a month ago to 1,000 Naira where we are now. Uh, but what are the things that have been done rightly that has caused the Naira to gain in strength? And this is the reason I ask, because during your last appearance uh, on our sister political program, uh, you made a number of submissions about how what was happening had entirely nothing to do with any type of econometrics, but more out of sheer criminality by a number of banks who are sitting on 7 billion naira, uh, but are refusing to sell. And in fact, you know, upon intervention of the CBN with a certain sum of FX, they were selling at an undue uh, additional arbitrage. So I have those issues in your own view from uh, the point of view of a development economist, have they been sorted out? Uh, are they what has led us to where we are now with the Naira gaining in strength? Uh, uh, thank you very much. I just wanted to correct that figure. The, uh, the submission I made here was a $7 billion, not Naira, like you said, but I get that that's just a, big, uh, a mix up. Yes, uh, clearly I recommended what I thought the CBN should do, and they did most of it except one, but they have done that one through the back door, and I will explain. I talked about Binance, and we all saw what they have done. And Binance that has unnecessarily turned Naira into a Kalu Kalu business that they were doing then has been dealt with. That's number one. And I also said on that program that you mentioned in your studio here that the other problem that we are having is the fact that the people who should be doing retail and should not really be the one determining the price of our dollar to Naira under the three Marlins, like I call them that day, we are the ones causing all the problems. I mean, some of the problems. And the CBN, after that time, rather than the, you see, that, I think a, a day before then, or that very day, the EFCC went to Zone 4, we are chasing them, and I said that was not necessary. And the CBN listened to me, and what did they do? They banned or maybe on license, about 4,100 uh, uh, BDC. I mean, even when you hear that figure, it tells you that we were running a crazy system before that time. How do you even have thousands of BDCs in the first instance? Makes completely no sense. So what the CBN did was to license these uh, BDCs and put them under proper controls, checks, and balances. Now you cannot carry $200,000 and go and buy I mean, carry my and go and buy $200,000 to hide under your bed like they used to do before that time. So what CBN has now done is they are properly licensed. These BDCs, they have given each one the power to operate in a certain manner, such that if you want to be a national CBN, you will have a certain number of branches. If you want to be a local, just a state-based, uh, you have a certain number of branches, and you must have so and so amount as your uh deposit that you you have in in place so when that has been done also they have now added to that what i recommended that day which is you cannot just walk anywhere and buy currency without any form of documentation that has been sorted so by the time the cbn put all the many people that have been saying is artificial they are probably either not listening they are either ignorant or they are deliberately being obtuse because the cbn has put in place these checks so automatically all the criminality that was going on under has stopped just see what happened last month for the first time we shared the highest amount of fact two trillion 2.03 trillion thereabout yet the dollar did not rise one, because the people who, were, who when they collect the fact, I don't want to fight governors this month, so I won't mention that it is the governors that used to go and change most of it to dollars to high, cannot do that again. 
So all these things have been put in place by the CBN. Therefore, you are seeing the result in the gaining of the Naira against the dollars. The Binance that, were, that was deliberately uh, making the Naira to be, to be weak by all this, uh, they, were, they were doing a lot of hedging and betting against the Naira have suddenly stopped. And I, I keep seeing people saying, keep your dollar closer, don't sell, there has no fundamentals. And I laugh at them. Because even the rise of the dollar against the Naira had no fundamentals. And I, I sit about to say it. So now I gave a third recommendation, which is to deal with the heads of some of these banks. Now the CBN probably didn't want to do that. So what has the CBN done? It has said, now go and increase your uh, shareholders' funds. And you have to do it in certain manner. So all the monies that they are sitting on, that they are, they are deliberately not bringing out, must come out. Because now you have to increase your liquidity. Whether you like it or not, you can't sit on those dollars again. So the CBN has done all the three things I said. Just that the third one was not done the way I said, remove the, 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 the uh, MDs of those banks. Rather, they have said, go and increase to 500 billion. Uh, is it 500? Yeah, 500 billion. But if I had my way, I will even go to 1 trillion. Because you need to deal with some of these banks who are part of the problem that we are facing before. But for now, I completely give the CBN kudos for going through these reforms without so much force, like we have said. No fuse, no noise, no gaga. Just doing the right thing slowly, gradually, and here we are today in terms of Naira versus dollar. Mr. Ayolo, I see that uh, you're not smiling today with these uh, bank owners. Uh, if you have your way, you're going to do even do um, even more things that the CBN is doing. But we're seeing a lot of activity from the monetary end, and we're seeing the productivity as well, because as Naira is rebounding, although you had said that both rise from Naira or dollar were all artificial and all of that, uh, if I understand what you inferred. But let's talk about the fiscal end. What do you think has to be done from the fiscal end uh, to match up the energy that is coming from the monetary side, because it's the, uh, Mr. Wale Edun is called the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy. How much coordination are you seeing, or would you want to see, so that we can sustain the gains and see the results reflect uh, in tapering down inflation as well as reducing the cost uh, as much as possible, so that Nigerians can begin to, you know, see the dividend of democracy. All right. Uh, what I want Mr. Wali Adu to do is he needs to take a little bit more charge of, uh, since he's the coordinating minister of the economy, I want to see more synergy with the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Trade and Investment. Uh, what will that do for us? Uh, and then maybe Ministry of Transport and the Ministry of, uh, uh, yeah, maybe Ministry of Transport because... Um, Sometimes you have to look at it. The, like I said earlier on, the figure that contributed the highest to this infl current inflation figure is from agriculture. So the Minister of Agriculture needs to sit up with the Minister of Finance because no matter what the Minister of Finance does, if food inflation continues to rise, you will have failed. And the way you can stop that failure is to synergize. And how do you do that? A lot of things can be done, but... I can just propose a few here, although I, 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 these days I hate to give free advice on TV because nobody pays me for these things and I, I really don't like just telling them this is what you should do. If they really want the good idea, they should come and meet me, let's talk and then we can say this is how we'll do it. But however, for my audience this morning, I'll say there should be some coordination between the Ministry of Finance and Agriculture to ensure that uh, staple food prices are brought down in the next couple of weeks. Uh, also, for that of trade and investment, I'm sorry, I really don't see what they are doing from that ministry till now. So they need to sit up as well to put in some of the ideas that was uh, uh, sold to Nigerians during the election. And I remember clearly I was one of those people who sold those ideas to Nigerians. When we look at the manifesto, we said uh, um, there will be... Uh, a way where all the six geopolitical region will be allowed to play in their area of core competence. That is their uh, uh, area where they are strongest so that you will have industries attracted to these places. If you have production activity going on, if most of what we consume is produced 
or at least assembled in Nigeria, you will bring down the prices of some of these goods and services. So these are, there are a lot of things that can be done, but like I said, I, I don't want to be giving too much free advice on TV. I gave the CBN free advice, they didn't pay, they implemented the advice, and now we are seeing the results. So the fiscal people can come see, we can sit down again, I can tell them this is what I think we should do. However, like I said, there should be coordination between those three or four ministries so that the result will come to pass very soon. But uh, like I said, food will begin to come down when harvest starts to happen in the next two or so months. Because clearly, when the food prices start to come down, right. the uh, headline inflation will naturally reduce. Because uh, I always say it, and I will say it again, like uh, the Yorubas will always say, when hunger is taken away from the life of a man, right. most of his problems are That's already solved. solved. Absolutely. So if you reduce the food inflation, you will definitely hit some other areas of our lives, and then we cannot begin to talk. Or, or also, like I said, Mr. Mr. The energy prices, especially yeah. this band A, band B, band C nonsense, needs to be jettisoned, and a sensible approach must be undertaken so that Nigerians can enjoy these things at a reasonable cost. Because what they have done now is when you increase one particular aspect far above, about 400% to other area, what you will do is everybody will not claim we are on this aspect, then cost of production will be dumped. By that cost of production goes up, I mean, the final uh, cost will be dumped on the consumers. So I think the NERC needs to go back and rejig and rethink and stop this nonsense band A, band B, band C, because we are still not getting the light anyway. So they need to sit down and reject it. Just these are things that, that needs to be done right. so that we can have some sensibilities in our economy. Uh, I will not leave the fact that you've, you're asking for payment. And people will ask, whatever happened to patriotism, Mr. Yalowo? You're a patriotic Nigerian. And you campaign for it. And you, you <laughs> know. So. Uh, uh, my patriotism, my patriotic... Pre uh, preaching was what led to what we're having today. I was the first to sit down and say, look, Binance was a problem. Deal with them. Uh, BDCs were a problem. Right. Deal with them. But don't go around beating up people and arresting them. Just put in the policy. And it has been done. And then the banks. So I have been patriotic. Well, Nigerians this are has, grateful. Everybody has seen the results. Nigerians, today, thank the you, about Yalo. Yalo. That day when I sat here, it was 1,900. Right. So I have done my job. And some will say it, it was a joint a collective work. So thank you for your patriotism. So let's tap into that patriotism, patriotism yet again and draw from it. Uh, the former governor of Kaduna State, uh, Mr. Yalo, uh, that's um, Nasir El Rufai, uh, made some sort of revelation. Some people were not shocked, but for a lot of people, coming from that level, it was a stamp of, you know, authority of sorts, that this government is still paying subsidy. In fact, it is more than what used to be. And one of our users had asked about um, witchcraft economics. Some other people say voodoo economics, because this government says it is saving money by not paying subsidy. That's why we have the FAC allocations going up. So if you are paying more subsidy, according to the former governor of Kaduna State and some other economists, how is our FAC still going up as well? And why is this government not coming out to tell Nigerians the real situation? Uh, what, what, the, what the former governor of Kaduna said uh, is not out of place. I, I think Nigerians, like I say, we are always not taking time to find out or make researches. The president said, and I may not be able to quote directly, as I said, he said, yes, they, we have removed subsidy, but we will step in as at when necessary. So uh, because the price difference between Naira and dollar went up, and we are importing most of our, our PMS, automatically, if they let that reflect on um, the final cost of PMS, we should be paying close to 1,000 or something around for a liter. So it is clear that there has been some adjustment here and there. So it's not a big revelation, like Malam said. It is not a new thing. It is something that some of us have known that was going on. However, I, I may want to dispute the fact that he said it is more now. I, I don't think it is more, because if they have completely been paying like we used to pay in the past, the subsidy figure will have been humongous beyond belief. Yes. And like you rightly said, if they were paying more subsidy than we used to pay before, we would not have the kind of fact we've had. So I dispute 
the are uh, more from what he said, but there's no doubt about it that there's been some adjustment in prices of petroleum because of the difference in naira and dollar. However, with just about a difference of just 300 naira now from the 700 that it used to be, I, I think the cost will drop in terms of the amount. And then when naira finally strengthens to, because I said it, I said, okay, not here. I said it in my friend's birthday that I, I, I think the naira was undervalued, that the naira should not be, uh, should be between 600 to 900 naira, in my own estimation. So if the naira stabilizes around that area, then automatically the amount that is being paid as subsidy to balance out the difference will be much lower than it used to be from every indication. Well, more importantly, the differentials, you know, what, are what Nigerians are yearning for, to see it in the interventions in areas like agriculture that you talked about. But earlier on, Mr. Oyalo, you, 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 you said that, um, you know, inflation may still go up over the next few months, but there is a possibility that price of commodities will come down now that uh, Dangote has begun to sell diesel to uh, marketers. But if inflation... Is, yet, is set to go up yet again. Isn't it now instructive for Mr. President to invoke the Price Control Act to protect Nigerians? Because as we said at the beginning of this program, Nigeria seems to be an exception with the rule that what goes up should come down. What are your thoughts on I, this? I, I, I agree with you in this. I, I agree. The President wanted... I think the President is, from my own analysis of him from afar, he looks like somebody who believes in the classical school of economy. So, uh, and I, for once, I have a lot of disagreement with the classical school of economy where you say the force of market. It, is, it has been proven in Nigeria that we don't have force of market. We have more of a, uh, a few cartel. And I will, I will prove that to you by saying there's nowhere in the world where you have airline association, owners of association of airline, determining price of, uh, of ticket. You, each... As each airline should run as it wishes and put prices as, as it does, as it wants to do. However, only in Nigeria, owners of airlines sat down and said we will not do. So you find out that we have a little problem with classical economy here in a system where there's always some people who sit down in one room and determine the government must not sit down and, and think the forces of demand and supply will work 100% here. You must help that force by... They're telling people to do the right thing. We have the FCA, FSCPC, we have a lot of other agencies that can be empowered to ensure that we, what we are seeing is not demand and supply, it's price gorging, and we need to deal with that. Because let me give you an example. Somebody on this same X app that you were talking about talked about a, 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 a cream he used to buy for 2000 or so, but has now gone to 7000 okay. even when Even if you say it was imported cream, from what that person said, it is clear that dollar to naira did not go up by seven, I mean, by that amount of percentage. It didn't go up about 3%, I mean, 300%. Dollar went up by, from 750 to 1,003, 1,000, then gradually up to 1,009 before it started coming down. So there was no way that cream from that analysis should have gone from uh, 2,000 to 7,000. So we have a way here of we, of being evil to ourselves. Right. And I've always said it that Nigerians are generally very funny people. We have a way of making life harder for ourselves. And then we go and tell, uh, make testimonies in church of how God has blessed us. Meanwhile, we will not tell the people that we cheated our fellow brothers and sisters. It was only in this country that if the price of face masks that used to be 50 naira suddenly became 500 naira because of COVID. So price gouging should be dealt right, with Ayala, if I'm by in. the government. I, don't, I completely subscribe to that. I if I'm in, uh, to uh, we're totally out of time, but you need to answer this control. for me maybe in 30 seconds, oh. please. Uh, 30 oh, seconds. Uh, if you look at the graph for okay. between May to March, by ascension is quite steep. When you look at the headline inflation and the food inflation, 10, 10 to 15% increase. If you look at month to month and all of that, uh, but the government is targeting 21% yeah. at the end of the year. Is that a possibility? It is possible. It is very possible. Like I said, it, it has, if you notice the, the increase in inflation rise, although it has gone up, but it has reduced from 1.8 last month to 1.5. So it might go up maybe 1.3 or 1.2, and then maybe to 1%, then it will start dropping from that moment. Yeah, it, it is quite achievable. Ms. Ayala, 
development economist, thank you so much for your insight and continue to be patriotic. Um, <laughs> this is our job. So we we'll bring you here. So maybe you give us another I, scoop I on how... Come and pay for my patriotism. I spent money to learn this. It's, it's your party that's in power. <laughs> I'm sure the president is listening. <laughs> he will do something about it. Well, thank you for coming on the program, Mr. Ayer. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, we'll switch gears now and take this short break. When we come back, we want to make sense of what exactly is going on with Kano politics. Has uh, Abdullahi Gandouji, the national chairman of the party, been suspended or not? We'll find out from those in the know. Join us again. Today, on the 15th of April, 2024, we, the leaders of the APC in Ganduja Ward, the Wakintu Power Local Government, engaged in thorough deliberation and subsequently decided to suspend the erstwhile governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Umar Ganduji, in light of the allegation of bribery involving foreign currency. It has come to our attention that Ganduji has been summoned to court to answer for these accusations a development that we believe could potentially besmirch the reputation of our esteemed political party. This resolution was reached collectively on behalf of all executive members of the APC in Ganduja Ward, Dewa local government, Kano State. to the program and we switch gears now to politics as we dig deeper into the purported suspension of the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress and former governor of Kano State Al Haji Abdullahi Ganduje and what seems to be the counter suspension of those who suspended him some describe it as a moral and political burden on the leadership of the All Progressives Congress and nationally. Joining us to look at this now is Mr. Wangida Isa, a legal practitioner uh, who will join us shortly. But really, it's an interesting uh, one to look at uh, when we look at the many you know, implications of this uh, suspension stemming really from, um, you know, the alleged bribery allegation uh, that, uh, you know, was leveled against the governor from the time from, from of the national leader, rather, of the party from the time that he was governor of Kano State. And, uh, you know, what, what are the implications of this 
for the leadership of the All Progressives Congress. Some are asking uh, that the president stem in, uh, step into the, the matter to avert, you know, a, a, a crisis really for Kano State. And uh, we're looking at this uh, and to also ask who are the actors involved. Some are saying that, you know, they have been sponsored by the NNPP in Kano State. So really, there are myriad issues, you know, to examine as far as this suspension is concerned. So there's a lot to talk about when it comes to this issue. Uh, the worry for the political players is that we've seen this play out before. It starts like, quote unquote, a joke, mm. and then it becomes a reality. So we can go back to the time of Adams or Shomole. Uh, it started like, okay, you can even suspend it from the word. But before we knew Senator Adams or Shomole, now Senator, <laughs> was no longer the national chairman of the party. Mm. The same thing with Iyocha Ayu, the PDP, uh, former PDP national chairman. The same thing started, he said, like, oh, he cannot be removed from his word, he's a national, but at the end of the day, he was gone. Because the word is actually the real, yeah. the fundamental organ of the party. That's where you are known as a member of the party, not at the national level. We can even go back to Uche Secundus mm -hmm. of the PDP as well. Right, right. So we can keep going back as much as possible. Now, this has come forward, this has happened. Uh, but if you know the back story, the fact that the NNPP government has started a probe and instituted a shoot in court about the issue of probing uh, his predecessor, I'm talking about Abba Yusuf, the governor, probing uh, Abdullah Ganduje, especially that controversial alleged bribery, $200 that we saw those videos that was quite controversial, plus other issues. I had a conversation with the chief press secretary of the governor, and uh, some of the things they are saying is the fact that they want to rein in on some of uh, the past leader to get... Uh, get the commonwealth of the people back, allegedly, that he took. Yeah. So that is where this word executive are benchmarking their decision. But the APC has also come out in the state to say, we don't even know these guys. They said there were two members of the party that were there that have now been suspended by the people who led, I think Guanjo and the other, the other gentleman, they said they know him, but there is not a member of the party in that world. So it's a, it's a convo, convoluted issue. <laughs> sometimes to understand these politicians. It is, uh, uh, and then there's a court judgment also, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, ruled that the, the, the governor cannot be tried in Kano State because it's a federal offense. Uh, but it's instructive, you know, when you look deeply about how the court has ruled. The court hasn't ruled that he cannot be tried because there is uh, evidence, you know, that was found online at that time. But let's take this conversation now to our guest, Mr. Wangida Isa, who is a legal practitioner, who joins us now uh, on the program. Good morning and welcome, uh, Mr. Isa. Uh, we're wondering where you are in all of this. Uh, from what perspective do you view it when you consider how the court ruled? Of course, when you also consider the politics in Kano State, uh, is this the uh, voice of Pete, uh, is it the voice of Issa now and the hand of Jacob that is playing out in all of this? Or are the allegations valid enough such that it's a moral burden on the leadership of the APC as some choose to view it? Well, good morning, um, my sister, and good morning, uh, viewers. Yes, go ahead. Did you get the questions? Yeah, I, I do. I do. Um, First of, all, as a, first of all, as a rider, I, I wish to state that um, I, I am waiting for the day that our politicians will be that uh, honorable uh, as, this, as they are deemed to be. Because from the first day I saw the charges against the former governor, who is the uh, ruling party's national chairman, I was waiting for him to actually honorably resign because those charges uh, heavy allegations that ordinarily, as uh, a former governor of Kano State and also as a national chairman of the All Progressive Party, who ordinarily uh, we should take note that this is a party that is a ruling party. Uh, I, I expected him to resign. So this is like, um, uh, it's been long overdue. But going back to your question as to the issue of the allegation and then the ruling of the Federal High Court Kano, I think it is very important to look at, you know, the contents or the wordings of the judgment of that court. That is no, there is nowhere the Federal High Court in Kano exonerated the former governor of Kano State or 
uh, you know, uh, refused or gave any order restraining the Kano state government from charging him for other allegations. When I went through the charges, uh, I, I discovered that there are other charges that ordinarily were not brought up before the Federal High Court, and then the Kano state anti-corruption have, you know, the, 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 the jurisdiction to try him on those charges. And then even on the issue of the charges of the dollar, the ruling of the Federal High Court was very clear that this particular case, it is a case that should be tried at the Federal High Court. Okay, that is to say it is a federal offense, which, you know, in any case, that does not mean that this man has been exonerated. And then they cannot stand anti corruption coming up forward with other charges, you know, that has to do with, uh, uh, you know, uh, corruption charges, you know, allegations of, uh, you know, converting public properties to his personal uh, properties or to his family and the rest. I think that they are heavy charges that ordinarily an honorable person of his caliber and uh, should have ordinarily resigned. Right. So just to be clear, uh, you, uh, you are particular about the I think the office, the individual, but what about this process we're seeing, the two groups that seem to be at loggerheads? We need to understand uh, your position on that, uh, because the word executives say the first group that suspended him are not legitimate, that if only two of them are members of a party and the two have been suspended. So, uh, yes, you, you can talk about those things, but let's talk about this process as well, which for you is legitimate. The first group that suspended him, or the other group that says, no, he's not been suspended. Well, well I, I think um, I, I will go with the first group, and my reason is very clear. And uh, if you look at Article 21 of the APC Constitution, it gave the powers, you know, the, 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 the word executives to receive a complaint and that when they receive such a complaint, they, on their own, you know, can uh, actually sit and then deliberate on it and then come up with, with such a measures. If you look at Article uh, 21, uh, uh, particularly at Paragraph 9, Roman Figure 9, you will see that based on the allegations, you know, brought forward against the, 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 the national chairman of APC, the word after receiving such a, I mean, a complaint from anybody from his polling unit, have the powers to sit and deliberate and then come up with such a measures. And then when I went through the procedures, uh, you know, I, I discovered that, of course, they have the jurisdiction to do that. And the uh, president have shown that uh, uh, Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduja is not the first, you know, national chairman to be removed from office, particularly from, you know, his, his ward uh, executives. We have seen what happened to the former uh, APC chairman, uh, now Senator Adams of Shomele. We have seen what happened to Secondos. So presidents have yeah, shown that... Yes, pardon me, Mr. Issa. Uh, we we understand that background, but so we can follow you step by step. So you say that you go with yes. the first group uh, that said they exactly. suspended him. So was the chairman, the yes, ward sir. chairman, was he in that group or is he in that group? Well, what matters is whether the, the you know, they form quorum. No, no, I understand. I'm asking I, I, that, is by, he in yes. that group? Is he in that group? But it is not only the chairman that have the power. You're preempting my question. Is whether uh, the number, Mr. Issa, whether the me. number. You're yes, sort of preempting me. I just want to know, was he, I'm not adding anything, was the ward chairman there? No, from the list I saw, the ward chairman was, was not part of it. So but how when many I executives? Went through, I saw their minutes. Right. How many executives there are nine e were in that uh, group? There are nine executives out of 25, which by the constitution of APC, they have formed one third of the executives and they have the powers to go ahead. Mr. Issa, the, the challenge, so, so that we put everything in proper perspective, I had a conversation with yes. the state's uh, legal advisor, uh, advisor yesterday. They are saying which is why there is a little bit of a confusion. You are saying there are nine that form a quorum based on the number 24 or so that can suspend anyone at that level who is a member of the party. But the local government is saying, from the conversation we had, is that only two people that were seated there were actually members 
executive members of that particular ward, which is why they suspended just those two members. I wanted that to be in your response. What do you make of it? Well, I, I, just as I said, um, from what I saw, I saw a list of nine members, which ordinarily attached to the names of, you know, before each of their names, they have their designation. And uh, until maybe the APC come up to say, or if it is proved beyond, you know, the ordinary man's uh, perspective, that these people are not actually executives, then of course they can come up with that. But what I'm saying is that from the document I saw, which I watched in this particular, uh, you know, in, in your own uh, uh, TV station, I saw nine executives with their designations, and going by that, I'm going by the provisions of the APC constitution. If truly those nine, you know, uh, people that signed the, 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 the paper, of course, they have formed quorum, whether the chairman is there or not. I, I was privileged to see, you know, to, to, to go through their minutes where a particular, you know, I think the assistant secretary moved for a motion that the legal advisor should chair the meeting in the absence of the chairman and the secretary. So if those nine people are actually elected members, you know, executive members of uh, uh, Ganduji Award, then what they do is actually right. It's within the, the right, confines Isaiah, of the law. Uh, uh, so from a legal mind, from your perspective as a legal practitioner, what do we make of this situation? Now, we saw that there were nine persons. They appended their signature to that document. There was a minute. At the end of the day, the leadership of the party at the local government level is saying, just two members are members of our party. And for those two that were part of that decision making, we've suspended them. So what happens to the decision that was made by, it's difficult to even describe the nine now. Well, I, I think it is very clear that, uh, you see, if at the point of, you know, the suspension, those nine of them are actually executives of the world, their suspension would not in any way affect the validity of the suspension, you know, of uh, Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduji. So what is before us now is whether or not the nine of them are actually, you know, executive members of the world. Because for you to suspend somebody, at the point at which you suspend such a person, if he is acting legally as an executive member of the world, whatever suspension, uh, you know, his suspension would not in any way affect the decision they must have reached or, you know, the decision they have taken prior to their own suspension. So the question is whether the remaining seven are executives or not. I am not an APC member. I am not from, you know, uh, uh, Ganduji Ward. But just as I said, from the document I saw, from their designation which I saw, I believe that if they are truly the executive members of Ganduji Ward, then all their decisions, you know, is entered and is within the confinement of the law. Okay, so whether or not uh, they are from Ganduji Ward, uh, I, I wonder if you see uh, the interference or a deliberate attempt by the NNPP in Kano State, you know, to use this to destabilize the party. That's on the one hand. On, on, on the other hand, you were saying something earlier about how um, the court has not particularly ruled that the Kano State Anti-Corruption Commission cannot uh, try the former governor. But really, um, I'd like you to speak to the um, laws of this, the, the, help us understand it legally. If indeed what was involved is the dollar currency, uh, but it was a crime allegedly committed on Kano soil, so why should it be a federal offense? T two in one there. Okay, um, you know, as far as the Kano State Federal High Court judgment is concerned, uh, if you look at the charges brought, you know, against the uh, former governor, you will come to understand that only one of the charges has to do with the dollar issue. And the dollar issue, just as um, I rightly said, the court ruled that it is a federal offense. And then the matter, I think the, the, the complaint is already before the EFCC. The EFCC have done their investigation, which if I, my memory, you know, uh, is inter I know that there was 
a time where they said the, the, the report of the EFCC is, uh, is, you know, is ready. But what we are saying is that what happened to the other allegations, the other charges brought forward against the former governor, which by Section 22 of, you know, of the anti-corruption uh, laws, the Kano state government have the right and the jurisdiction to charge the former governor against those allegations before the state high court. And then on the issue of whether or not those party members have the right, I mean the executive have the right to suspend the, the, the former governor. If you look at the provision of section 23, or article 21 of the, of the APC constitution, and then particularly at paragraph D, I mean paragraph 9, you will come to understand that this particular allegation or the charges which is brought forward against the former governor is enough reason for the world executives to receive a complaint and act upon the complaint. It is not the duty of the state executive to interfere in this particular procedure because the constitution of the APC has stipulated the procedure at which level can the state act, at which level can the local government act, and then at which level can the you know, world executive act. And based on this provision, it is the powers of the executive, you know, of the world executives to look at the complaint brought before them to actually act. And for me, what they did, according to the constitution of APC, is right. Because at this particular junction, it is not the powers of the state executive or the local government, but the powers of the world executives. So it is the world executives now that have the power to look at the complaint brought before them and then take the appropriate action, which I believe what they just did is right as far as the APC constitution is concerned. I know a lot of people will wonder, uh, what's the much ado now? I mean, there was a lot of time to talk about this, to take these cases up, and uh, they would say not much was done up until now. So is this some, some, of, some sort of vendetta, uh, what have you? And they wonder how this will trickle down to governance itself. So two groups at loggerheads. Uh, what do you see being the way forward, particularly because the NNPP at the state level is also in the mix here? So are you also considering the possibility that the NNPP, as said by the other group, that this is actually being orchestrated uh, by the ruling party at the state level? And we all know the chemistry or the history uh, between both former governors, uh, the leader of the, and the national chairman of the APC and uh, the leader of the NNPP. So are you also factoring that into this uh, whole scenario? And what will be a final resolution for you? Well, I, I think actually I do not believe in that school of thought that, uh, you know, the NNPP are the ones orchestrating this particular uh, this. And I know that the NNPP the NNPP, being the, you know, the, 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 the ruling party in Kano State, have the powers to charge the former governor. But I don't think they have the powers to interfere into, you know, the issues of the APC, because uh, it, it has been heard severally that, um, you know, intra-party issues, uh, uh, the, the, you do not have any powers or whatsoever to go into it. So I, I, I know that, uh, you know, politically, yes, people could have that uh, uh, you know, perception that it is the AP NNPP in Kano State that it is, it, I mean, uh, uh, orchestrating this. But I do not believe to that school of thought. I just felt that, just as I rightly said, I actually thought immediately after the charges, you know, w you know was brought to the public domain, uh, Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduje, being an honorable man, after serving Kano State for eight good years, and then now being you know, the national chairman of the ruling party. I think posterity, you know, hold that. He honorably resigned, you know, step aside for the sake, you know, of the, the, his, I mean, for, for, for respect that, uh, you know, that he is not just, you know, uh, an ordinary person, but a national chairman of a ruling party. I expected him to honorably resign, honestly, before now. And that is why I started by saying that this has long, you know, this is long overdue. By now, this issue wouldn't have, you know, been brought, you know, to, to, to the public domain. He will have ordinarily resigned and allowed, you know, himself go before the court and then clear his name. And then by then, at, at, at the he, he will have been more, you know, he will have earned more respect. So I don't believe to the school of thought that, you know, this is an uh, NNPP uh, issue. No, NNPP, by the, by, 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 by the laws, have the right to, you know, 
uh, charge him before the court, then he let him go and defend you know, the allegation before him. But not that NMPP will now go into APC to say, no, come on, suspend this one. If they, will have, if they wanted to do that, they would have done that since, because they have been in government for complete one year. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't believe to that school of thought, actually. You know, Mr. Issa, there are so many legs to this conversation. You know, some would also talk about how it is uh, important uh, for the APC to address it because of the impact on the political fortunes of the party in Kano State. And some would not talk about, uh, you know, using this as an opportunity to address the political imbalance in, uh, you know, the north of the APC. And uh, we, we look forward to seeing how the president will handle this speaking of you know the former governor clearing his name this is also an another opportunity perhaps an invitation to him or his uh political cronies you know to speak up about this suspension this alleged suspension and of course the allegations mr isa would like to thank you very much for coming on the program mr wangida isa is a legal practitioner who joined us from abuja studios thank you so much well, for your time studio, on the actually. program Thank you. Yes, it's sir. my pleasure to be here. Yeah, he joined us from our Kano studio. Thank you so much. Now, up next, we touch on the softer side of things as we speak with that man who plans to make history by being the fastest man to travel around the continent and without flying. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Larry Lua uh, Babalovi joins us on the program. He will be traveling around Africa, uh, not just traveling around. He wants to do it as the fastest man to do so around the continent. We have 54 countries. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Jeffrey. We have a lot of drivers. You're the second driver that's coming on the show. Like, Sorry, there's I an avalanche of drivers. I couldn't help this. Oh, really? Because the goal is for him to uh, <laughs> take this across to, the take African this across across the the So let's just drape this around your shoulder. Okay. Uh, okay. I think that's going so, look good. I think I'm going to have to correct you. Beats, I'm not driving. Okay. All right. So there you go. Okay. That's beautiful. <sighs> this is how I'm going to it's take my picture. It's Nigerian spirit. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how you take your picture. Yes. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Very, very patriotic. So, Absolutely. What's the motivation? Hmm, where do I start? Um, okay, there are several motivations. The first is personal. I am, I like traveling, right? So I've been traveling for nearly 10 years. Like even when you see how I was brought up, I was brought up in the east, in the north, and in the southwest of Nigeria. So before this, I've gone to all the 36 Nigerian states. I've gone to the 16 regions of Ghana. I think I'm the only person that has done every state in Nigeria and every region in Ghana. I've been to over a dozen African countries, and I've been trying to travel to all African countries for maybe over 10 years. But on this trip, I'm going to be raising money for the Nigerian Red Cross. I was at their headquarters yesterday to sign the MOU. And then I'm going to be promoting the Borderless Africa campaign. I think I'll have more to say about that as the show goes on. So it's packed for you, exactly. It, I can it's see a lot it, of it, things. So, so in terms of, sorry, I have to go straight to that. In terms of funding, because it's expensive to do all of this. It is I wanted to get that funding expensive. off my chest. It is uh, not Because when we had Belumi uh, here, she talked about almost 30,000, is it pounds or dollars now? I can't remember that the is incredible. Uh, so, <laughs> so have, you, have you done the estimation and how much before we get to other details? Oh, yeah. Okay, so two things. Um, number one is, okay, so I applied for the Guinness World Record about nearly a year ago, so I've been planning for that since then. Secondly, I have been practically saving for this for a long while. Um, funding, I'm going to spend five figures in dollars, not low five figures. Oh, wow. But um, I have a couple of advantages. Number one is that... Um, I have been to about a quarter of African countries, and in most of these places, I have somewhere to stay. Um, okay. Number two is, like I corrected you, sorry, I am going by a road, so I'm not taking a personal car. I'm going by public transport to all the countries. Oh, oh, you're not driving. I am not driving. I am so going by So you're taking road, public transport one for one? by one. So you see more of the country, you see more of the countryside, you talk to more people. 
So now nah, that's ve- that's a bit confusing. Like, I mean, <laughs> okay, like, so my, 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 my colleague will take off from that. What part is confusing, Jeff? No, because uh, you know, if you're driving, yeah. the issue of fastest comes into being. Mm. Control, but perhaps he wants to do fastest in terms of commuting. Is that the record? Okay, and um, Guinness World Records they don't accept um, challenges with your own personal vehicle because then it looks like a race. So I guess for legal reasons they don't accept races on public roads. So anytime you see any record that involves fastest, you have to take public transport. As a matter of fact, one of my regulations is that throughout the trip I am not allowed to take private transport. One of the no, uh, yes. No. Only public. So I could take okay. Ubers, I could take um, I could charter other, cars, yeah. I could charter public transport, but I cannot use my own public transport. Which is fine because I wasn't going to use public transport before. I wasn't going to use private transport before, sorry. I'm going public transport throughout. So it's, it reduces the cost a little bit. And then um, I, I have one or two sponsors, not so many, but <laughs> um, most of the money is coming from my funds, or from my friends, friends' funds, personal funds. Five figures in, in dollars, dollars, not in yeah. Naira. Okay, is still at that point, so that's <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars. Yes. I, I don't know Over if Over nine months, it's, it's a lot, but... Um, I, I don't know if you, you get this from family and friends, you know, but <laughs> the, the question that keeps going through my mind is, what are you looking for? <laughs> That's to go Nigerian mother's question. <laughs> That's What's your problem? Exactly. You are not hungry again, have you? <laughs> it's not just family and friends. It is, you know, I don't say everybody because I think overwhelmingly the response has been positive. But um, you still have the occasional negative response. I mean, I've had people. Okay, so this is negative, right? That uh, are you looking for gold? Yeah, <laughs> some are even worse. I've had people predict my demise in oh, Somalia or Sudan. No it's not, it's terrible. They're like, once you pass there, and I'm like, come on. <laughs> people live in these countries. I mean, you don't, you're not just going to get to some of these countries you think are unsafe, and you're not going to vaporize the second you get there. I mean, if you look at Nigeria, so like I said, I've been to all the 36 states. As a matter of fact, there are only eight states I've been to just once. So the average states I've been to maybe three times or more. Nigeria is supposedly an unsafe country because, I mean, we have insurgency in some parts of the country, but we are in Nigeria, I'm in Nigeria, and <laughs> we are not dead yet. So you, with proper research, with um, proper planning, and a bit of courage is very possible. And one of the things I want to do and show is that Africa is safe to travel. I am big on that. Fantastic. And you've talked about the borderless uh, Africa. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I know we've talked about this a lot, how traveling through or within Africa can be a headache. It's sometimes easier to travel out of Africa. Let me take that again. It's most times easier to travel exactly. out of Africa than, it's easier, than it is traveling within Africa. And we're talking about after doing business with ourselves, how we need to be one. If our others see Africa as just one country, but when you come to Africa, you yeah, realize you that it's thing. a whole continent. Absolutely. So you are big on that. But I'd like you to speak to us about the process. Because traveling to these countries, you obviously have to get some documentation. I know you've been in the nation's capital for quite some time trying yeah, to get visas. documentations, visas, and the rest. So walk us through that process because, again, this will be part of the things we're trying to rectify. So just how easy, I don't want to say how hard, <laughs> that's a set of questions. How easy was it to get documentation for those countries? Okay, um, I think the first thing I'm going to say is that I'm going to be a little cautious here because um, <laughs> some of these countries, I'm still going to go to them and I don't want to get um, bad blood. Yeah. But um, huh, it's been a whole lot. So I am traveling with a Nigerian passport. That's the first thing people should realize, with only a Nigerian passport. Theoretically, it is not very difficult to travel to African countries with only a Nigerian passport. I said theoretically. So you have about six to eight countries that might give you issues. Um, some, there are some countries that at some point they stop giving visas to anyone. There are some countries that maybe Nigerians have not gotten a good reputation. Um, but um, for most countries, it's somewhat straightforward. 
Now, they are about, of the 54 African countries, about one third of them are visa free to Nigeria. That's about 19. Mm. Another one third are visa on arrival or e visas. Roughly one third. Now, the ones that require you to get visas, hmm, <laughs> some of them are a lot. So, I can give an example. There are about four countries that I applied for their visas. So this is not here, see, I applied for them. And in total, the costs were, were like maybe a million uh, or close to just four countries. And that included things like having to get an invitation letter, having to, okay, I mean, the account statement is standard. Yeah. Having to get an invitation, having to, um, some will ask you to justify why you're coming. Mm -hmm. um, I have been detained in a country before Again, I don't want to mention the name. Because you're going back there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've been detained in the country before for the person, the cops saw my stamps and they were asking me, why am I traveling to so, so many countries? Like, what am I doing? Am I a terrorist? <laughs> I, was, I slept in a cell. Oh, wow. So, yes, for a little while. So what did you tell them? That, you didn't explain that you're a tourist or a Pan-Africanist or whatever I it is. I totally did. There were several they, problems. And, and they the explanation you. didn't suffice. Nah. There were several problems, including the fact that they, they don't speak English then. And oh. then my French was a lot worse than it is now. I hope it is better now. Nah, eh, somewhat. And there are AI tools that can help you. <laughs> so, so, um... Okay, okay, go ahead. So, um... The African campaign is important to me because, like I said, I've been around a bit to Africans. Even in countries where we have um, free movement, ECOWAS, you still have some challenges. You still have better guards trying to, you know, collect payments and stuff off the hook. But I think that's even more straightforward. <coughs> the ones that the most serious issues for me are countries that you have to pay something like $400 to get a visa. <coughs> because if a person has $400, they are most likely not going to want to come to an African country. They may go to Paris instead or Dubai. So why? Is country A charging citizens of country B to come to their country and country B is doing the same thing for them? It's, it's absurd. You might as well just remove the charge. So let's put a fact sheet to, <coughs> excuse me, yeah. some fact sheet to, <coughs> to all of this. Um, okay. How long will it take? <sighs> so at the start, I said by saying six months, but um, it's going to take a lot more than six months. If I am very, very fast, it's going to take nine months because I plan to spend about four or five days in each country. So in each country, I'll visit the tourist areas, the explore the culture. Africa has a lot of things that <laughs> I'm sure will blow your mind. I can tell you for a fact. Um, so nine months is the minimum, but it might take a year. <laughs> so I'm going to be on the road for nine Months. That's that's a long time, and it's a big challenge. Fifty-four African countries: north, south, east, west. Oh, yeah. But the objectives are, you know, altruistic in nature. You know, um, promoting the borderless uh, uh, thing about Africa. But do you don't you think that simply raising awareness by your uh, tour around Africa is simplistic in achieving these uh, laudable objectives without policy backup? at the regional level, you know, for uh, the different regions of the continent? Um, so the thing is, you never know. <laughs> you never know what, I mean, you never know what your efforts can translate into. So I think I should mention that the Bolivar's Africa campaign is sponsored by an African NGO, that's Africans Rising. And um, we are going to be having a few conferences. I hope I'll be in the countries when that is happening around Africa. So um, sometimes, you know, a little spark <laughs> can change a lot. But another thing is that many Africans do not, some Africans do not even know how difficult it is to go to that African country. So, I mean, if we can tell Africans that, see, look, I'm coming to your country and this is what I'm facing. It might be more stark for them, it's more easy for them to say, tell their lawmakers, their parliamentarians, and um, their leaders. Um, but I also have, I am also likely to meet some um, government officials yeah. on the way. Oh, brilliant. So, 
Fantastic. Um, there, there are a couple more questions. Uh, oh, right besides here. the are you crazy question, <laughs> that, that I'm sure a lot of people are asking right now. By the way, if you've got questions for Hilary, you know where to send them to WhatsApp and online. He has his backpack here, I should say. The journey begins today, yeah. April the 16th, oui. and it's going to take at least nine months. Hopefully, if I am fast, if you are fast enough yeah. to so go April, across May, all of the July, African August, countries, September, 54. October, and, and, uh, so African, we're expecting you 54 African countries next yeah. year, early next year, December, uh -huh. early next year. Okay, so speak to me about <laughs> family because I need to be Correct. clear. Uh, your parents, uh, <laughs> your siblings. <laughs> Uh, what is going? What went through their mind? Uh, maybe they they know you to be an eccentric person. A lot of people might remember you. Are uh, you on the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire show? Do you know me to be an eccentric person? You want a million naira? We're watching the show. Uh, it was quite evident. So tell us, uh, did you even sell property? I need to know all of these strings attached. First, family. Okay. How are your parents? Perhaps your siblings taking this? Have uh, they disowned you? For the meantime, and they talk to us how you also, what this is costing you personally. Did you sell stuff and rest? Uh, how are my parents taking this? Uh, my mom right now is still, uh, <laughs> I got a funny text message from her <laughs> <laughs> this morning. I'm not going to see the contents, but I've been getting those kinds of messages. So I think my dad is more, you know, accepting, uh, but my mother... Ah, I have to really, really, really convince her. And, okay, so I can give an example. I told her I had gotten detained in an African country before. And so, okay, my mom is, she has a French doctorate from, I mean, she's, yeah, she's a French, she has a picture, she, she's a lecturer. And um, so when I got detained, I told people, right, but I didn't tell my mom deliberately because um, I didn't want her to worry. But um, when it looked like they really, really wanted to keep me there, so I had them call my mom. And of course, she's, she's a professional. I mean, they could even see from her voice that she knew. So I think maybe that contributed to how fast they let me go because um, she spoke French better than them. So um, that is how bad I tried to keep things away from her. <laughs> like, I was... Detained, and I didn't tell her. And you needed her help, yes, and you didn't tell so. her. But um, I think, again, I have advantages. One, like I said, it's not my first time. So, after I'm almost even, I think that's around when I first started traveling. So, I went to 36 um, states so, you know, in Nigeria, and um, they right. were getting you seed, getting there you seed. There's a lot to talk about. I wanted to know if you sold. Did you yeah. sell anything? Did you sell anything? Yes, definitely. I had a restaurant. I sold it. You sold your restaurant to travel? Okay, uh, okay, maybe let's wrap up on this <laughs> because all of us are curious. Uh, in terms of your safety and security, are you putting up any measure? Is there any special? Are you talking to the embassies? What exactly are you doing? In 30 seconds. Okay, um, first of all, I'm traveling alone, so there's no, it's me and God, right? Um, yeah, I have some safety precautions. I'm not going to say all here, but mm. um, the first is the Red Cross is really helping me. They've been very, very helpful. So in most countries I go, I'll probably liaise with the Red Cross of that country. Then there are common ones like um, not telling people your next location. So um, even in my videos, there's going to be four day gap or five day gap or something like that. And then, you know, avoiding night travel, mm -hmm. asking questions and stuff. But again, like I said, right. I've gone on a three month road tour before, 11 countries. So. Oh boy. Wow. I think. <laughs> where, are you going, where are you going to first? Yeah. I can, can tell you that Bene Republic. Uh, oh, Bene first. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and so and you'll be doing this flag. live. You'll be showing your definitely uh, your updates from time. Yeah, on YouTube, Ileri Babalobi. That's my YouTube. That's okay. my Instagram. That's my YouTube. Ileri Luwa Babalobi. Thank you so much for coming. Wish you the best. I know that for, for the records, his bags are packed. From here, I guess he's heading out to I don't know what is he going whether he's going to use BRT to somewhere or <laughs> Molwe. I don't know. I don't know how he's going to do it. But well, thank you. I wish you the very best. We're expecting you back in December, January, or less than that. Thank you for trying to make sure that Africa is seen around the world Thank uh, you as a safe place. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. Well. Oh, boy. Ah, well, we have, we, we, we you got what's have messages? some messages here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, let me take this one from Emmanuel. He said, the prices of things once gone up in Nigeria are not coming down again. I believe the laws of gravity does not work here. Uh, a bag of Gary here in Port Harcourt is 100,000. It's more costly than when dollar was almost 1,800. 
Well, this one is from Comrade Mohamed Sani Abubakar from Federal University of Wukari in Taraba State. And he says, I would like to say the federal government needs to step in on agricultural production from the states. Those people employed in the Ministry of Agriculture need to be productive off season. I can't be paying people that aren't productive. We can't say that enough, can we? And this next one is from Akodi um, Bainway State from Engineer Larry Jiboy. He says, Yes. Naira appreciates against dollar, impact not yet seen as inflation increased from 22 in February to 33 in March. It says the concern is decisions being taken by government now with this situation will make it difficult to bring down the cost of production and hence inflation. So it breaks it down across electricity tariff, 60 kilowatt hour to over 200, over three times. This will affect cost of production, production I should say. So the point here is that we should not take a permanent decision on temporary situation and um, or you see the message goes on and on. And we now use the temporary situation to do national long-term project <laughs> financial calculations. Quite a lot, uh, but you get yeah. the point. But this is where we draw the curtains, and it's important to reiterate that a government needs to come clean on inflation. It's been said that we're even paying more at this time, and there are people who back that up, not just former governor of Cardin Estate, even those who are in the sector. So government should come out and be clean to Nigerians for the good of everyone. Well, that's the show for today. I'm Kayode Okikele. Thank you for joining us. Well, a positive one for Ilirio Lua. Pelumi made it, and uh, Coach Dre also made it, swimming the entire uh, length of uh, Third Milan Bridge. So we hope to see him back as we raise and rally African mothers to pray for his safe return. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. We will be back again tomorrow. I have Bukola. Okay. And don't forget, Sunrise Daily is off next. Thank you for watching. I'm Jeffrey Uzama.